Bible, you know, and I think this will, this will be tools that will aid us to let go of our will and to sacrifice and to continue that commitment that we need to have for God. Right, and um, according to our lesson, it tells us that we should be like an athlete, mm -hmm. no? Yes. To really exert all our efforts in order to achieve the best possible results that we can have, Correct. especially for the work of the Lord. Yes. And it, it requires what? Perseverance. It requires effort. It requires all our energy. It does not, I mean, it does not require only little of our energy, yeah. but it requires all our energy. Yeah. Perseverance, I think that is key. Can I just share uh, an experience you know, before yeah, we Pastor. give time for, the, for our uh, brethren to share some? You know, perseverance is something that I lack. And many years ago, uh, in IS, there was this uh, Morning Star group, right? You're, you're a part of the Morning Star. Yeah, that's the exercise group of exercise group. Uh, IS uh, that exercises, that meet every morning yes, yes. to do exercises. And I think I've shared this uh, experience to some, some may, have, may have heard, but there was a time that uh, my friends, an, uh, an Indian pastor and uh, another pastor from one of the countries in Africa, he said, Oh, Dr. Brian, you need to be exercising with us. And I said, okay, well, how? how you need to join Morning Star? Oh, and uh, my Indian friend will say, I'm Dr. Brian, uh, Pastor Brian, you need to be running with us. So, okay. So, we, I joined this Morning Star group. And the first thing that you have to do in the Morning Star is, oh, what is it? Calisthenic stretching and then calisthenics, yeah? And then you start moving, but you should not stop until it is time to stop, which is around 30 20, minutes. 20 to 30 20 minutes. 20 to 30 yes. minutes. So after stretching, you know, my condition was not far different from now. <laughs> I've been fat since then. <laughs> now, this is the point I'm getting to. So the, we started moving, but because I never move. It is difficult for my body to continue moving. So as soon as they start moving, they say, uh, Brian, don't stop. So I continue moving, moving, moving. And then, okay, they say, now we will run around the campus. We run around the campus. So we started running. You know, we start from the gym and we go towards the auditorium. As soon as we reached the auditorium, I was ready to give up. We were just running slowly because my sides were so painful. Because... Because I never, I never moved in my, in my life in IS, you know. So I said, oh, oh I will stop. I was, and then uh, my Indian friend said, I'm Brian, do not let the devil win. <laughs> oh, so this is now a great controversy for me. So I pushed myself, okay. I, uh, when we were halfway around the campus, I was, oh, okay, okay, I need to stop. And then uh, my uh, African friend said, Eh, my friend, do not let Satan win. Continue, continue, continue. So I push myself, I push myself until we finish. I continue moving, you know, even I was just half walk. But that was the point of the exercise, right? Moving. But when I arrived home, my wife said, Oh, Baray, kumusta ka na? Mamatay ako. <laughs> I told him, If they knock tomorrow morning, don't open the door. And he said, why? Just tell them, patay na ako. <laughs> you know, I did not persevere. When, you know, if I had persevered, then my lifestyle, my size would have been different. <laughs> but it was too much of a struggle for me, and the pain that I felt made me not want to persevere. And I think that's the same in our life, no? When we try to make that commitment, when we face painful hardship, you know, painful things in life, we will just give up. And then just continue on with the life that we were comfortable with. And I think that's the kind of thing that, that hinders us from making this 
radical commitment, that perseverance. So have you decided to do exercising again? Uh, I, was, I was inspired by Dr. Oklarit to fasting, but uh, <laughs> Doc Ming and I decided it should, it should just be intermittent. Yes. So every supper time, right? Every supper time yeah. and then just eat in breakfast. Okay. More than eight hours. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But All right. Thank you, Pastor Ryan, for that. I think it's time for us to open the floor for questions. We have microphones here. Uh, those yes. who'd like to ask questions, we're not going to promise you that we'll be able to answer all your questions. Yes. There are some brains that we have here on the floor. Yes. Probably they can also help us answer the questions that you'll be throwing to the audience today. All right, uh, uh, Dr. Wen, Ate Wen, yes. come up here on front, please. No, I have a question for you and, of course, for the rest of us here. The lesson is emphasizing on the will. Yeah, that's your, that's your forte. And God is saying, the Bible is saying, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. So that's emphasizing also the devotion. Now you confuse us. You too confuse us because you emphasize, you emphasize the will. But the Bible is saying the heart and the will. How can you reconcile the two so that you stop, we stop being confused? Very good question. Probably I'll add to the confusion. Yes. Because in the New Testament, I mean in the Old Testament, you don't feel with your heart, but you feel with your kidneys. Yes. yes. So Dr. Brian, do you have an answer to that question? Well, uh, there are scientists here who can explain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for that question, uh, Dr. Rowena. Um, I think when we, the, well, the Bible is saying really, you lo love the Lord with all your heart, okay? I think uh, what our heart wants is very much related to our will. So I don't think there should be any confusion there when, when we say with all our heart and what is the second one? <laughs> with all our strength. Yes. Soul. So, there, there should be no confusion between the will. Because, in my understanding, that if you do not have that kind of conviction of your will to love whole, wholeheartedly, then it will not be possible to love God. It will be just a half-hearted love. Right. Uh, when we look at the uh, biblical understanding of the heart, the heart actually is from here and above. Okay? So that means to say, uh, your heart is actually your will also. So when God says, love the Lord with all your heart, that means to say, love the Lord with all your will. So it's just a matter of, you know, the Bible uses so many different terms, uh, which is part of what we call the uh, literary point, in the literary point of view, there are so many synonyms referring to will, which is also, um, uh, heart is also part of the will. So when God says, love the Lord with all your heart, that means to say, it's also loving the Lord with all your will. Uh, uh, yes, doctor, yes. can I share also? Yes, Dr. Mary. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your exposition on this topic. Uh, sometimes there is confusion between the heart and the mind. Yes. But when we talk about the heart and the mind in the Bible, we are... You know, these uh, two terms, the mind and the heart, is used interchangeably. 
Um, however, when we go to Philippians 2, 5, Apostle Paul emphasized the, the importance of the mind when he said, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. And then if you go to Romans 12, the Apostle Paul again says, be renewed through your mind by the renewal, renewal of your mind, renewing of your mind. So when we talk about decision making, okay, uh, Paul is uh, referring to the work of the mind because the mind has four compartments. There is that image, there is that information, there is that ability to think, and there is that idea. That's why last night I was really emphasizing how the mind is really affecting us. Because when the source of our mind is uh, our worldview is uh, different, then it also affects our perception in life, our decision, and even the destinies that we are heading to. So when we talk about the will, these important components are there. So the mind, and then, of course, the mind of Jesus then has to control our heart because Apostle Paul uh, make or ma made the distinction. So the totality of this, the work of the mind, the work of the, 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 the thought, the thinking, and the feeling comprises the will. So when, when Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your heart, then he's saying that when we make a decision, there are a lot of factors that come into play. We have first to begin with the mind. Because the mind, according to Mrs. Ellen Dwight, is should be the one that controls also the heart. And sometimes uh, we do not allow the mind which, according to Mrs. Ellen Joy, the mind is the avenue in which the Holy Spirit can communicate. So when the Holy Spirit is communicating in our mind, then our feeling also is being controlled. So that's how we see when we talk about the will. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, yes, uh, let me, thank you Dr. Marigal for that. No? Let me just add also what Ellen Joy tells us that it tells us that the man has two components, the higher propensities and the lower propensities. The higher propensities, this is where God actually controls you. Now, the lower propensities, these are our sinful tendencies. So, Ellen G. White tells us that all of this should be, the lower propensities should be con controlled by our higher prop propensities. Yes, Dr. Uh, Bing? I'd like to share my reflection on the question of Dr. Wing. I believe that what sets human beings apart from the rest of the creation is the willpower. Because we have a God who wants to engage with people who are not robots. So this is a very powerful component of human beings. In fact, the great controversy, the war versus good and evil, is really happening right here in our prefrontal cortex because two opposite poles want our decision. And whoever we decide on and choose to be with wins. Tayo po ay napaka-importante. My reflection as an educator is, this is the depth and the weight of the burden of educators because we are influencing the minds of people. We want them to choose what's right and how we become like the image of God. We return back to that image of God is right in the making right here in the mind. So that is my reflection. There is no, I hope there is no confusion in this. The appeal of the text that love your God with all your heart, that is an appeal for human beings to choose God and to respond to that 
we make a decision using our willpower. Amen. Thank you for that, Dr. Bing. Uh, sir Adap had his hand up just now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're talking about the will. And we are supposed to, or we, we are supposed to surrender our will to God. And that makes it easier. The things, the, when we make decisions, if our will is surrendered to God, it's a lot easier because, like what Pastor Mergal said, we will have the mind of Christ. And so, we, with all those uh, trials, um, may mga decision tayong gagawin. Kapag ang ating puso, ang ating will, yung, yung kaloban mismo natin ay nakasurrender sa Panginoon, if it's already surrendered, then we can easily exercise the will of Christ in us and it's a lot easier. So the focus here is surrender our will to Christ, then it makes a lot easier. This crucible, we can bear it because it is now Christ's will working in our will. Yes, thank you, Kuya Jacinth, for that. Yes, Dr. Mergal. Uh, thank you very much for re-emphasizing that. I fully agree, agree that uh, there should be a complete uh, submission of our will. Uh, there's only one thing that I would like to add, that uh, submitting our will is impossible for us. It's only the work of God's grace. So the more we realize that we cannot do it by ourselves, the more we grow in the longing that we have to submit ourselves to Him. So it's only by grace that we grow. That's why Peter is very clear that we have to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in that way, we will be able to become submissive we will be able to achieve what you have mentioned, radical commitment. And it's difficult. It's difficult to have that radical commitment to say, Lord, yes, I'm experiencing all these troubles, these crucibles, but Lord, because you are in my heart, you are in my mind, I love you, Lord, then I have to do it. And it's not easy. It's not easy. And that's uh, what happened to Jesus. He was the commander-in-chief in heaven. But when the spirit of prophecy says, he submitted himself to the redemptive will of the Father, the response of the Father, he became the Lamb of God, and then he came into this world. And you know what had happened to Jesus. He died at the cross. Because of his submissive mind, redemptive mind, submitting to the very will to the redemptive will of the Father. Right. So it takes also personal decisions no, to really submit. But of course, we have to also understand that uh, the point of Dr. Mergal, that we cannot do it on our own. No, we cannot do it on our own. It's very, very difficult. So we really have to let the Holy Spirit work in our lives every day, every moment. And uh, the... The other thing that we have to take note here is that we should be conscious that the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. Let's always remember that the Holy Spirit works in us not in so many big things, but as the experience of Elijah, the Holy Spirit works in a still, small voice. So let's be receptive to the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank you. Pastor Brian. Yes, um, we, we still have a few more minutes. Yes, Maybe we can entertain another question for discussion from our brethren. If you don't have questions, we'll be asking you questions. <laughs> uh, the, Dr. Rowena is... Sorry, no one likes to ask questions. Uh, ito pa. Uh, this is not a, bio, a neurobiology class, so it's okay. Um, I just want to inform you that uh, your brain, whether you like it or not, your neurons are very emotional and at the same time very rational. So they could not, the devotion and the cognition cannot go away from each other. They are Siamese twi twins. 
And so the fuel of your will is actually your devotion. And that's why people decide to marry because they fall in love because uh, of this affection, this affect kind. So your, your left brain is a very rational, critical, calculating brain. Your right brain is very emotional, pitched and tone sensitive and sight sense, visual sense sensitive. And this two, the two hemispheres should work together and they could not go away from each other or else you don't have a brain. So uh, devotion and cognition always go together. And so the fuel of the will is actually your affection. But we have another question here. Because yes, you emphasize about this struggling with energy. But the Bible is saying also that stand still. This is the battle of the Lord. So uh, you've got to reconcile it for us so we won't remain confused again. When do we struggle? Paul is saying, struggle, work for, out for your salvation with fear and trembling. But at the same time, God is saying, oops, oops. Keep still. This is, stand still, for this is the battle of the Lord. So, how would you reconcile these two? All right, thank you, Atiwino. But before we go to the question, let me just add to the comment of uh, Doc Kueng. Now, we have to remember that, I mean, we, we should be very grateful to the Lord that He had created us into, the, uh, into that kind of creation. Huh? Uh, you have two, what do you call that? Hemispheres, the cognitive and the affective. No? And we should be very thankful. And we, I, I believe it's now time for us to recognize that we have a very wonderful creator. No? That we are not only created as rational beings, but we are also created as emotional beings. Okay, kung rational lang ta, puro lang talaki. No? Kung emotional lang ta, puro lang din tayo, puro lang din kayo mga babae. Should, it should always be together. No, just joking. <laughs> but anyway, that's how God had built us. You know, uh, you know, sometimes men tends to be more rational. That's, that's psychology. Um, women tends to be more uh, emotional. But you see, the Lord had created that us that way so that we can be you know we can live together harmoniously dr brian do you have a, an answer to that question <laughs> i am a, not a biblical scholar like you but i think what dr rewena is uh, referring to is the passage of, in uh, exodus 14 is that correct uh, Exodus 14, 14, where Moses tells the children of Israel, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Um, let me, I think I will just add this to this question. I see that Mom Ardell is smiling. So, you know, when, when the Lord, in, in this context, the Israelites were at the tip of, they're at the Red Sea, you know? And behind them are the Pharaoh's troops. What would happen to you if you are a fugitive and then the police are after you and you have nowhere else to go? I think there was panic, maybe. And I think psychological study says that the hysteria is contagious. So if, somebody, if the whole population of uh, uh, Israelites at that time, somebody started saying, look, oh, they are coming now, we are going to die. So, you know, the, the state of the mind, I believe, at that time was, was a chaos. They, they were afraid, they don't know what to do, while at the same time, they did not think that actually God is in control of the situation. So I think at in, in the sense when God, when, uh, when God asked Moses to tell the Israelites to just stand still means cool ka lang. Diba? 
Don't, don't think too much of it. Because the Lord is already doing something about it. Right? Uh, so, while Apostle Paul is saying he's struggling, uh, I believe that the struggle that he is having is he is struggling with God's power that God allowed him. So, in situations in our life, there may be time to just rest from our struggles, listen to what God wants to, to tell us, get a clearer picture of, of what God wants to do in us instead of always doing everything on our own. But then there are times that we are also called to do something about it. To not just stand still. Do something about it. If this is a habit that we need to stop, do something about it. Don't just say, Sige lang, God, ikaw na bahala dyan. No. We need to do something. There should be that effort in us. And uh, I think that those two things are something that should complement uh, our, uh, our the actions in life. I think Dr. Mergel is ready to add something. Yes, Paul? Uh, yeah, in reaction to the question of Dr. Antimano. I really like his, her uh, presentation, the thinking and also the feeling, the right side and the left side. And God is so wonderful that in between of this right side and the left side, there is that center side, which is the frontal lobe. And it is in the frontal lobe wherein we make decisions. So, yes, in the mind, God communicates. The Holy Spirit communicates. And that's the beauty of God. But more than that, God's grace is also something that will help us. Because According to Mrs. Ellen G. White, grace is a power. What power? Power to energize us, power to transform us, power to enable us. And that is very clear in the commentary of uh, Romans uh, 13. The holy, uh, what's this? Grace is an energizing power. Power to energize us, transform us, and to enable us. So in situations like this, if we only submit our will to Him, by saying, Lord, yes, there are many crucibles, crucibles in my life. I have many challenges. But Lord, I just entrust that into Your grace. Then the Holy Spirit, through God's grace, will energize us, will... Um, enable us and then will transform our uh, what we say coward thinking <laughs> our weak decisions and say Lord I'm going to stand for it I'm going to do for this so let us not always uh, uh, entertain an idea that when we are in the middle of troubles crucibles that we are left out. Always remember that there is that grace of God who can energize us, who can transform us, who can enable us. The Holy Spirit is there. What we do is just to cooperate with the outworking of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mergal, for that. Uh, probably I'd like to add also a text in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 13, if, if my memory serves me right. It tells us that when we go through crucibles, when we have trials, we are not left without any help, right? It tells us that God is there to give us the strength enough for us to overcome all those trials. Do you agree with that? All right, yes. Let me just give a comment also on uh, the question of Ati Wang. Um, there are actually so many instances in the scriptures where, where we're told that just be still. No? In Psalm 46, also it tells us that be still and know that I am God. But when we look at the context of the text, 
um, it does not mean that we should only stand still and we, not, we should not do anything. The context of that is basically found in 2 Corinthians chapter 20 where Jehoshaphat during that period of time was attacked by three um, groups of kings from, from the area there. And Jehoshaphat actually prayed to the Lord and asked him, asked the Lord to guide him what to do. So basically, when, when uh, at this period of time, the Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat was so afraid, he was so troubled because he did not know what to do, considering that he knew that the power, the military power that he had during that time was out. Um, outpowered by all those three different groups there so to make the long story short in in this chapter it tells us that the lord told him jehoshaphat listen okay listen and what did he say here listen and i will show you what i will do to these people my reflection on this is number one when we are faced with so many troubles First thing that we must do is be still. What, what do we need to do there? We have to understand that there is um, an, uh, a God who is more powerful than anybody of us. That He can do great things for ourselves. Now, sometimes what we do is when we encounter trouble in our lives, we try to make solutions on ourselves forgetting that there is a God who can provide solutions for us number two my reflection on that is that we are basically all weak what we only what we cannot do anything what we can only do is really to trust in the Lord but and number three is God told Jehoshaphat go and do what I should do to you number three it also includes obedience after all those things, God had shown to the people, especially to Jehoshaphat, and uh, I believe uh, the experience of the Exodus, they have seen the power of God working in their lives. It is now time for them to go and obey. In other words, first thing that we must do is completely trust in God and then obey whatever He tells us. Yes, um, one more comment probably. Ma'am Ardell. There at the back. And yes, okay. And, yeah. and Dr. Gariova. Yeah, yeah um, the struggle actually is supposed to be the standing still. The struggle really of what we, as a Christian, you struggle, our struggle with all energy is actually the standing still and letting God. That is where our trouble comes because we are not used to letting God. So when we let God that is standing still and that is a great struggle for us because we tend to know everything, we tend to exercise and move just like pastor brian would like to move but when we stand still and let god do it that is a struggle in itself as a christian because we wanted to make sure just like jacob he wanted to keep holding on to the angel and struggle right but it is supposed to be god holding us and that is a struggle. That is a struggle. So when we ourselves are going to make sure that letting God, that's the struggle. And we need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to make sure that we let God. And that's the only time we can stand still. Thank you so much, Ma'am Ardell. Yes, uh, yes, we have to let God, no? Let's stand still and let God do. Rest, okay. Dr. Gariova, we recognize you, Pa. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I don't belong to this group, but as I was listening, God doesn't function in a vacuum. When we say the Exodus, they already were just a few days before. They saw the ten plagues, and it was for them to be free. And yet when they were free, they forgot how powerful God was. 
And that's exactly our problem. We think only of the present. We did not think of the past, how God intervened and changed the factors in our lives. You see, when we do that, then we're giving God a chance. I mean, it's in our lesson, lesson Sunday and Monday. Paul says here in 1 Corinthians 1.29, to this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Now, what is Paul saying here? He says that he's striving, but not in his power. The word striver is labor. It means work to the point of exhaustion. This word was used by Atlas as they strained. The word strive, struggle. But Paul is saying here, he gives a twist. Because he's striving not with everything he has, but with everything God has. It's grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. Thank you, Dr. Grilva. I like that. Okay, I like that comment. So we'll give time to our conclusion of the lesson. Probably we'll be asking. Uh, we will ask Dr. Mergal to do the last comment and the conclusion for our lesson yeah. because our time is already up. Please, Dr. Mega. Now let me stand. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you are already senior citizen, sometimes you are already tired of standing. This is just my conclusion. Yes, we are living in a time wherein our faith is being tested. It's difficult, especially at this time. But Mrs. Ellen Joy says, yes, we're living in a stormy times. But we should never entertain doubt that God will not lead us through. Amen. Let us remember, according to her, that we are people who are bringing the message of hope to the world. And I would like to connect that to our work as teachers. Sometimes we have some... Uh, challenges in the schools, in our schools, uh, salary, I tell you. Hope I have time to share some of my experiences with the teachers. But Mrs. Ellen G. White said, let us never entertain doubt as to the leading of the Lord. Apostle Paul, I would like to connect that in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. You know, Paul was experiencing a lot of challenges in his life. But you know, I like his statement when he said, Let us thank Jesus who gave us the victory. I like that. Let us give thanks to Jesus who gave us the victory. In other words, yes, we are confronting a lot of these crucibles, a lot of problems. But remember, Jesus did it for you. He is a victorious God. He died for you. He provided everything. He is a victorious God. And He is giving that victory to us. So the admonition is in verse 58 of 1 Corinthians 15. Paul said, brethren, be steadfast. I like that. Why we have to be steadfast? Because of the victory in Christ Jesus. What else? Be unmovable. Be steadfast, unmovable. And then what else? Exiling in the Lord's work. Let us always exil in the Lord's work. Let us do the best we can. And then the last part is, for your labor will not be in vain. That's the promise to us teachers. Yes, we have a lot of challenges. But remember, the victory that we have in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mergal, for that. Dr. Brian? Yes. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you, Dr. Espero, for uh, being in this uh, discussion team. And uh, yes, uh, after this, we will have Dr. Atimanon uh, with the testimonies that she has prepared. And 
but at the end of, uh, by 10 o'clock, we would hope that we will have a 30-minute break, and by 10, we would need to go out and have a group picture because it, our time is so short, so we need to do these things. It is important for uh, the documentation and for a legacy that we will leave that we were once here as scientists and science teacher here at MVC, and we were here discussing this very important uh, lesson of how we should be struggling with the Holy Spirit to change our hearts to be dedicated to God's work. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. We will pray. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the time that you have given us to discuss the powerful lesson from our Sabbath school lesson plan. As we end, we want to give glory to you because you are our God and because the Holy Spirit will always help us in our time of need. And so help us, Lord, to make that radical change in life so that we can surrender our will and our plans to you and that we will be your vessel as we carry on our responsibilities here on this earth. Thank you, Lord. We want to surrender all the proceedings of the program that we have for this Sabbath into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much for that powerful song. I really saw the singers very passionate and uh, when I get to heaven, I will be singing just the way you do this morning. So more power to you. Okay, for the entire time we are here, we've been listening to the testimonies of people linking God in their own ways. But this morning, and I tried to speak to some people during the previous days in order to prepare for this Sabbath school feature. I don't want to tell my testimony because I want to listen to the people's testimonies. Among the quite many, there's one who responded. And so, thank you so much, Noel. But before he stands up and uh, tells his testimony about his encounter with nature, I would like us all to read and listen to ourselves about the testimony of God. Do you know that God has his own testimonies? So um, it would be good if you're going to group yourselves by union so you could uh, listen and hear your voices good. We still have enough time. So please Perhaps all the NPUC will stay here. You can stand and have one microphone. And then um, the other one, the SPUC perhaps will stay here. And the CPUC, that's Central Philippine Union Conference or Union, Union Conference, will stay at the back. And uh, we will divide, you know, uh, reading God's testimonies to us and see if we could answer his questions. Okay, please move. Okay, so most, the SPUC will stay here, the NPUC will stay here, and the CPUC at the back. Okay, get your digital Bibles. We've been listening to people talking. Now we are going to listen to God talking to us. So please get your cell phones. The best version is NKGV. That's New King James Version. Open your Bibles to Job chapter 38 and 39. Are you good? Where are your digital Bibles? Are they with you? Okay. Open your Bibles to Job chapters 38 and 39, and I will tell us which verses we are going to read. So for, the ch for chapter 38 of Job, all of us will read. Teka lang. Do we have microphones? There should be a group leader because God wants to listen to us reading his testimonies this morning. So we just, we are not going to listen only haphazardly to ourselves. So we need group leaders. So for SPUC, you need a group leader for your choral reading, also for the NPUC, and also for CPUC. Can we do that? 
God. Who's your leader here? The one who would hold the microphone. Okay, Ma'am Bing. And uh, for the NPUC? Ma'am Sabat. Tingnan natin kung sinong pinakamagaling mag-oral reading ngayon ng kanilang Biblia. And for the CPUC? Wala. Who's your group leader? The one who would hold the microphone just so we would hear you and God would hear you and you will hear yourselves. Who? Mrs. Orquesta, Jerilyn, are you there? No one is volunteering, so I volunteer you to be the group leader because you're the one I know. Okay. So, we will start reading from verses 3 down through the last verse. So, this is the trick. We are going to read the first 10 chapters, starting from verse 3, all together. And then we will assign the, the spook group to read verses 11 through 20. And then the uh, CPUC group will read verses 21 through 30. And... Um, the NPUC group will read verses 31 through 40. And in verse 31, we will read them all together. Okay ba? Okay ba? Klaro ba yung... Nakaka... Naiintindihan ba ako ng instruction ko? Yeah, my students don't understand me a lot of time, but uh, that's why I want to be sure if you understand me. So, gets na? Okay. Halika no we will read. We have many questions to God. And this morning he's throwing back many questions to us in case we know the answers. So Let's start reading from verse 3, and we will fill this room with God's testimonies. Okay, let's start. Now, prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. You determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band? When I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors? 11 through 20. Where's your mic? You can have my mic. Hello. 11 to 20 together. When I said, this far you may come, but no farther, and here you proud waves must stop, have you commanded the morning since your days begun and caused the dawn to know its place? that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. It takes on form like clay under a seal and stands out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld and the unpraised arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea or have you walked in search of the depths? Have the gates of death been revealed to you or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? 
Have you comprehended the breath of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light and darkness? Where is its place that you may take to, it, to its territory, that you may know the paths to its home? CPUC, your turn. Go, ready? Go. Do you know it because you were born then, or because the number of your days is great? Have you entered the treasury of snow, or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? By what way is light diffused, or the east wind scattered over the earth? Who has divided a channel for the overflowing water, or a path for the thunderbolt, to cause it to rain on a land where there is no one, a wilderness in which there is no man, to satisfy the desolate waste, and cause to spring forth the growth of tender grass? Has the rain a father? Or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice, and the frost of heaven who gives its birth? The water is hardened like stone, and the surface of the deep is frozen. Hello. Hello. 31 to 40. Can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades or lose the belt of Orion? Can you bring out Maseroth in its season or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you set their dominion over the earth? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds that an abundance of water may cover you? Can you send out lightnings that they may go and say to you, here we are, who has put wisdom in the mind or who has given understanding to the heart, who can number the clouds by wisdom or who can pour out the bottles of heaven when the dust hardens in clumps and the clods cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lurk in their lairs to lie in wait? All together. Who, Who provides, provides food for, for a raven, raven when its young ones cry to God and wander about the lack of food? food. We don't end there. Let's turn to the next chapter, 39. This is the only time we read our Bibles here, so sulitin na natin. Everyone, especially those who are having the microphones with me, so let's fill the room with God's testimonies this morning. Okay, start. Do you know the time when the wild mountain goats bear young? Or can you mark the when the deer gives birth? Can you number the months that they fulfill? Or do you know the time when they bear young? They bow down. They bring forth their young. They deliver their offspring. Their young ones are healthy. They grow strong with grain. They depart and do not return to them. Who set, Who set the, the wild donkey, donkey free? Who loosed the bonds of the onager? Whose home I have made in the wilderness and the barren land his dwelling? He scorns the tumult of the city. He does not heed the shouts of the driver. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after every green thing. Will the wild ox be willing to serve you? Will he bed by your manger? Will you bind the wild ox in the furrow with the ropes? Or will you plow the valleys behind you? Will you trust him because his strength is great? Or will you leave your labor to him? Will you trust him to bring home your grain 
and gather it to your threshing floor. The wings of the ostrich wave proudly, but are her wings and pinions like the kindly storks. For she leaves her eggs on the ground and warms them in the dust. She forgets, she forgets that, that a food may crush them, or that a wild beast may break them. She treats, she treats her young harshly, as, as though they were not hers. hers. Her, her labor is in vain, without concern, concern. Because, because God deprived her of wisdom, and did not endow her with understanding. When, when she lifts herself on high, she, she scorns the horse and its rider. Have you, Have you given, given the horse strength? strength? Have, Have you clothed his neck with thunder? Have Can you frightened him like a locust? His, his majestic snorting strikes terror. He, he pauses in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He gallops into the clash of arms. He mocks at fear and is not frightened, nor does he turn back from the sword. The quiver rattles against him, the glittering spear and javelin. He devours the distance with fierceness and rage, nor does he come to a halt because the trumpet has sounded. At the blast of the trumpet he says, Aha! He smells the battle from afar, the thunder of captains and shouting. Does the hawk fly by your wisdom and spread its wings toward the south? Does the eagle mount up at your command and make its nest on high? On the rock it dwells and resides, on the crag of the rock and the stronghold. From there its eyes are the prey, its eyes observe from afar. Its young ones suck up blood, and where the slain are, there it is. God asks questions scholars cannot answer. Men of the greatest intellect cannot understand the mysteries of Jehovah as revealed in nature. Divine inspiration asks many questions which the most profound scholar cannot answer. These questions were not asked supposing that we could answer them, but to call our attention to the deep mysteries of God and to make men know that their wisdom is limited, that in the common things of daily life, there are mysteries past the comprehension of finite minds, that the judgment and purposes of God are past finding out. His wisdom unsearchable. If he reveals himself to man, it is by shrouding himself in the thick, thick cloud of mystery. Because human science cannot in its search explain the ways and works of the Creator, men will doubt the existence of God, but we are different. God's existence, His character, His law, are facts that all the reasoning of men of the highest attainments cannot controvert. They deny the claims of God. The neglect of interest among their souls, it is because they cannot understand his ways and works. Yet God is never seeking to instruct finite men that they may exercise faith in him and trust themselves holy in his hands. Every drop of rain or flake of snow, every spire of grass, every leaf and flower and shrub testifies of God. These little things so common around us teach the lesson that nothing is beneath the notice of the infinite God, nothing too small for his attention. But prefer. I give the time to you. I don't want to miss listening to the testimony and the discovery of Noel Duble about environmental science. He is a faculty in the 
biology department of the Central Philippine Adventist College, but currently studying in UP Las Banas, taking his master's degree in environmental science. So give us one more. Okay, so good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. So I was given the task to share to you a very short testimony on how I encountered God in nature. So as what was made, mentioned by Mom Rowena or Dr. Rowena, I was once a student of uh, UP Los Banos in their environmental science program. And as we study about the environment, Spe uh, specifically on its interactions with the society, I learned a lot and I gained a lot of knowledge seeing God and His marvelous works through this, through, the, through nature. And one of that could be, or what can I give you today is, for example, in the context of productivity. So we might wonder why how our nature provides us, or shall we say their ecosystem services on the provision in supplying our needs. Now, with this, it, it has a very crucial system, or shall we say a comprehensive system, or an ecological system, which has three vital components. And likely, it has, <laughs> A community, it should have a community, a healthy community, a source of energy, and as well as the continuous recycling of the materials. Now in this system, these three components should run naturally or in a healthy state so that, the syst uh, so that this system would be very productive enough. And likely, if we put it into our spiritual life, we should also have these three aspects. We should have a healthy relationship with our community. We should have always the source of energy, which is our God. And we should continually be renewed or be recycled every day with God. So I guess with that aspect, we will not only likely see nature as it is, but seeing nature in the viewpoint that God is working there would make us a better uh, Christian and devoted in his work. So I guess that would be all. Thank you. To close our Sabbath school program, we are encouraging everyone to sing with us our closing song, Take My Life and Let It Be. Shall we all stand? Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move and leave impulse of Thy love at the
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we had together in your presence. Help us to remember in the hustle and bustle of daily life that our time together and our time with you is ultimately what matters most. Heavenly Father, there is so much in the world around us that we can't comprehend right now. We experience a lot of struggles, struggles in life. At times like this, life feels overwhelming until we are reminded that you are in control. Help us to practice patience when things seem slick. To remember that you are the God who makes a way when there seems to be no way. Please bless us with your perfect peace. Father, help us to rest in you and trust in you. Lord God, thank you that we can come to you with every concern, big and small. Lord, we come to you today to ask that you pour your Holy Spirit out in this place. May we feel you move within our hearts. May we hear your voice. We ask that you help us to have ears that hear and hearts that are willing to follow. Lord God, we ask this in your name. Amen. Okay, um, we need your cooperation and we have to do this. This is Mindanao, the second largest island in the Philippines, located in the southern part of the archipelago, dubbed as the land of promise, majestic and breathing. It cradles on top promising natural resources. It is mainly characterized by narrow coastal plains, peninsulas and faulted mountains, and has a range of tropical rainforest and great biodiversity. Some of the world's largest pineapples, bananas, and pomelos are grown here. Even the most coveted king of fruits, durian, is in abundance. Truly, the fruit basket for the country. It is rich with mineral resources and takes pride in its variety of fish, corals, and finest pearls. Indulge in the charm of sunrise and sunsets that are captivating and breathtaking. This is Mindanao. Welcome to paradise. Mindanao is a cultural tapestry. It is home to the largest community and diverse native ethnic groups in the country. 18 Luma tribes, 13 ethnic linguistic Moro tribes, and 64 settler groups who have lived in the island for over a century already. This is where South Philippine Union Conference is nestled. Education has always been embedded in the lives and tradition of Filipinos since the ancient history of the Philippines. As of academic year 2021-2022, South Philippine Union Conference supervises 82 elementary schools, 10 academies with 12 campuses, and 3 colleges catering to a total of 19,342 students across all levels and employing 1,023 teachers, instructors, professors spread all over the eight missions and conferences within its territory. Here, we do not compromise academic excellence. It is a platform of Adventist education our learning institutions are recognized by the International Board of Education and accredited by the Adventist Accrediting Association. Several also submit for voluntary accreditation under the Federation of Accrediting Agencies in the Philippines through the Association of Christian Schools, Colleges and Universities Accrediting Council Incorporated. Each college campus is manned by high-caliber 
administrators, instructors, and professors and non-teaching personnel who have earned academic training and credentials from reputable universities and institutes of advanced studies, making them highly piratable within the region. However, they choose to stay because foremost, they identify themselves as missionaries in the educative ministry of the worldwide church. This is their calling. Our colleges have produced top-notchers in the National Board Examinations annually conducted by the Professional Regulation Commission of the Republic of the Philippines. Our graduates are highly employable locally and internationally. Our higher education institutions are equipped with state-of-the-art facilities embraced in a landscape of panoramic scenery, highly conducive for learning. Professional training embeds the unique philosophy of Adventist education that trains them not only to acquire gainful work upon graduation, but also for meaningful service in this world and in the world to come. Our basic education curricula is well balanced. In fact, it exceeds the minimum requirement of the country's Department of Education and is uniquely designed to nurture leadership skills and hone a variety of talents among our learners even at a young age. Acts of volunteerism and service is intentionally integrated into the curricula. The thrill of adventurer and pathfinder classes are too exciting to be missed. Learners look forward to camping, nature activities, outreach programs, skills training, and even the annual tactical inspection that is conducted in each club by the youth department. Mindanaoans love music. Our schools deliver excellent music program that cultivates the budding interests of our young. We cater to an array of musical activities from singing to playing instruments to choirs and singing groups to musical plays and even flash mobs that promote Christian music. Here, learning is fun! We promote science camps too that aims at exploring science to discover God. The COVID-19 pandemic may have shaken what has been normal for our schools and colleges, but it has proven and fortified the resilience of our institutions. We have ventured to new learning modalities, both synchronous and asynchronous, that are able to reach our students wherever they are. In fact, our teachers were able to find learners in the outskirts and mountainous areas who were not able to experience Adventist education prior to this pandemic. We have developed innovative systems that allow us to deliver uncompromised quality education even without meeting our students in person. Distance has not deterred our connection with our stakeholders. Now we can truly say, we can, we are able with or without lockdowns. Oh, don't miss out on the fun that our courts and fields provide. There is no dull moment when students and teachers alike exercise and play together. We foster a healthy lifestyle too. Living right is living great. Integrated in the instruction is a strong sense for global citizenship. Our schools actively participate in the annual harvest and gathering campaigns and outreach and extension programs. This year, we hit the call of helping our schools and college in Ukraine by creating awareness of what they have to endure and pulling funds for this cause. We embrace a global approach where we widen our global perspective but maintain our local identity. Our educational institutions cater to all students from all walks of life, coming from various religious backgrounds. Spirituality has always been the heart of our operation as we push forward the mission of the Worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church as its educative arm. 
the COVID-19 pandemic might have halted the traditional religious activities in our schools and colleges, but it has not deterred them from realizing the mandate of seeking, saving, and discipling the youth. In fact, in the most recent 40-day My Journey with God online evangelistic initiative of SPUC in 2021, 1,249 souls baptized are accounted for from our educational institutions who are denominationally affiliated. On top of this, other forms of evangelistic efforts continue to thrive through virtual and or physical platforms and this too, harvest souls for Jesus Christ. We have not wavered on our calling to deliver quality education that is distinctively Adventist despite the major setbacks that our schools and colleges had to go through these past years. It is by God's grace and human grit that we push forward the educative mission unapologetic and uncompromising. There is no stopping Adventist education. We are South Philippine Union Conference Education Department and we will go! In an altitude as lofty as your hopes for the future sits humming, shining the beacon of excellent Christian education. Mountain View College As rich and far-reaching as your grounds, education here is a full circle of experience. With breathtaking views and an intimate community to inspire spiritual upliftment, our students gain a perspective to treasure what matters most in life. A scouting party was sent to look for a potential site. Many places were visited, but it was in Bukidnon where they found the location that met all the requirements. Mr. Antipas Valendez of Bagon Taas entertained the scouting team and introduced them to Mr. Mariano Abesta. It was Mr. Abesta who took the team to survey the area where MVC is now located. In the prayer garden, under the Inium tree, the survey team knelt to ask for God's guidance. Experience the Prayer Garden When classes officially opened in April 1953, there were 172 students and 18 teachers. Plans for a hydroelectric plant were still underway, so in the meantime, Electricity was provided by a generator. The lights from the campus could be seen for many miles around, which was why the locals started calling MVC, the School of the Light. The name stuck and has since become the official title of the school. These hydroelectric plants help MVC save a lot of money on energy costs. No other academic institution in the Philippines has their own hydroelectric plants to supply their own energy. It is only at Mountain View College. Experience the Hydro Part of the steep, rugged ridge that rises from the valley of Mount Nebo boasts a tempting waterfall which is approximately 120 feet in height named Malingon Falls. This arresting waterfall is one of the tourist spots in MVC. It is also a major source of water that supplies the residents of the campus. The voluminous water also supplies electricity to the campus through the Hydroelectric Power Plant 1. Wild and domesticated animals are refreshed when they pass through the waters of the falls. It is the biggest among the waterfalls of the MVC property. This natural drop of cascading waters is approximately 4 kilometers away from the main campus and is bordered by lush trees, 
rocks, and a wild variety of plants within the outgrowths of Mountain View College. Experience Malingon Falls They say that you have not gone to MVC if you have not been to Jubilee Park. Strategically located above a slope, the view provides a glimpse of Valencia City that looks like little sparks of stars during the night. Due to its serene ambience and trimmed lawn, Jubilee Park is a favorite place for morning and sundown worship. It's also a conducive place for family and friends to talk and sit on the lawn. Experience Jubilee Park as you enter Mountain View College, a vast field occupies its territory. There lies Philippine Adventist Aviation Services, or PAMAS. It is a humanitarian organization that uses air support, medical care, agriculture, and educational assistance to uplift people and extend help in isolated and remote areas. Experience Pamas. The view of the fourth highest peak in the Philippines is very vivid on the main campus. The magnificent mountain is a common sight to behold for all who are on campus. On a clear day, Mount Kitanglad presents itself to those who are walking around the campus or just sitting on grass. Experience the view. While enjoying the wonders of Mountain View College, you can re-energize yourself with the healthy foods especially produced for stronger body. Try our nutritious and delicious soya milk, cinnamon, and vegetarian foods of the college cafeteria and food factory. Experience holistic education. Experience the wonders of MVC. Let us sing, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Please be seated. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath day to all. We surely praise God for uh, allowing us to join this Triunion Science Educators and Adventist Scientists Conference with the theme, Integration of Creation, Science in Teaching and Mission. I would like to congratulate our organizer of this event, our leaders from SSD in Education Department, for choosing Mountain View College to be the venue because it really fits to our theme. You know, Mountain View College, we are surrounded with majestic creation of God. So our theme is about integrate, integrating creation science in our teaching and mission. I'm sure that we are blessed since Thursday evening with the lecture and messages that we heard. And I hope that we are ready to go back to the place where we are assigned. And our mandate to all of us is that we should integrate, integrate creation science in our teaching and mission. Uh, I would like to welcome also our viewers in our Hope Channel, South Philippine Union Conference, and some of you are viewing on Facebook and YouTube. We would like to uh, thank you for joining in our worship this morning here in Mountain View College, Helltop. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 12, it says, It is I who made the earth and created man upon it. And I stretched out the heavens with my hands, and I ordained all the hosts in it for the sake of our viewers i would like to read to you the parts of our program uh, there's a slight change with our program this morning so after my part will be our anthem uh, opening song entitled we love thy sabbath lord then the hymn of adoration will follow then the scripture reading it will be given by brother Umar ando then the prayer hymn where Jesus pleads. Then the pastoral prayer will be given or will be prayed by Pastor Jose Manuel Espero. Then the hymn of response, O Thou Who Hearest. Then the one who will going to lead our uh, gathering or tithes and offering is Dr. Lemuel Bandai. Then during uh, the gathering offering, there will be an offeratorious music. It will be rendered by Espiro children. Then it will be followed by the prayer of Dr. Bandai. Then we'll be blessed with the message in song. Our special song will be given to us by the MVC male chorus. Then the one who's going to introduce our speaker is Dr. Mary Jane Sabbath. Then you're going to hear the spoken word. Then our consecration song, I Will Go. Then the benediction will follow. So instead of the speaker, it will be given to us by Pastor Jisrael Mercader. Then the hymn of assurance, soon Jesus will return. Our song leader is Ma'am Michige uh, de los Reyes. Then on the piano, Ma'am Jacqueline Punay. Our serving deacons and deaconesses, uh, Mededin, Maiden Romanilios, then Mafi Abiner, uh, Fanuel Villanueva, and Aaron Mercader. Your presider. Brother Romy Lampote. Lampote, may we feel God's presence as we worship Him this morning.
my maker and my king for a hymn of adoration. Our dear God and Heavenly Father, this morning, as we worship you, we pray that the Holy Spirit fill us, anoint us, and as we come out of this place, we will be blessed closer and have a deeper relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we acknowledge our Creator and worship Him through our Titan's offerings, I shall be reading and let us ponder on this passage that is found in the Acts of the Apostle, page 75. It is God who blesses men with property, and He does this that they may be able to give toward the advancement of His cause. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He causes vegetation to flourish. He gives health and the ability to acquire means. All our blessings come from His bountiful hand. In turn, He would have men and women show their gratitude by returning Him a portion in tithes and offerings, in thanks offerings, in free will offerings, in trespass offerings, should means flow into the treasury in accordance with this divinely appointed plan, a tenth of all the increase and liberal offerings, there would be an abundance for the advancement of the Lord's work. Shall we now show and acknowledge our Creator 
through the returning of our tithes and show our love to God through our offerings.
our Creator and our God, and yet our loving Heavenly Father, we give the praise and honor to you for allowing us to experience your goodness, your faithfulness, your mercy, and your love. Before to you this morning, dear Lord, we offer to you these tithes and offerings coupled with our sinful lives, hoping that this, far, that this would further your cause. For we ask this in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. The core of our study of our message this morning is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 15. You could read it with me in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he takes up the aisles as fine dust. As many who are able to kneel down, may I ask you to kindly kneel down as we pray. Heavenly Father, the author of this vast universe, the creator of every one of us, once in the Garden of Eden and the second time through the death of Jesus Christ. What is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that you have created him a little lower than the angels? We come before your presence with this understanding that we have nothing to present to you but because of your great love and because of your loving grace, we can come and kneel down before your throne of grace, bowing our heads because you have accepted our prayers, our praises, and all our songs. Today, the Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you have been with every one of us. We acknowledge that there are so many challenges that we encounter from day to day in our teaching lives. We encounter issues and difficulties that sometimes rock our faith in you. But we are grateful for the working of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives, that through Him, He teaches us to stand firm and to teach the truth that had been shared to us. Today, the Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you also for the messages that we have heard from the scholars. We pray that those thoughts, those points that they had shared with us may become part of our lives and may we share this to our students and to everyone who listens to us and who wants to know who the Creator is. So we come before your presence once again, the Heavenly Father, today for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, 
that the Holy Spirit will continue to pour out His gift to every one of us, the gift of teaching, the gift of knowledge, and the gift of wisdom, so that we may impart the truth to everyone who would like to listen to your words. Today, we bring to you Elder Jacinth Adap, who will be sharing the message. We pray that you will continue to empower him so that the words that will come out from his mouth will proclaim that you are indeed our creator, our God, the sustainer of each of our lives. We look forward to the time to meet you and to meet Jesus Christ who had created us twice. And we're looking forward to the time when all of us will be meeting Jesus Christ in that heavenly home where he had prepared for us. And may he say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you for the forgiveness of all our sins. And thank you for accepting us as your sons and your daughters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
my testing. It is my joy to introduce God's servant this morning. I am so inspired knowing how they were raised by their parents to become missionaries and coming to know some of uh, our speaker's siblings made me realize how God so faithfully used them in his vineyard. Our speaker this morning served the church in various capacities since 1984. He started as church auditor and accountant at the Central Luzon Conference before moving to North Philippine Union Mission. He became the financial controller of Southern Asia Pacific Division in 1997. In 2004, he answered the call to become associate treasurer of the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division in Zimbabwe and South Africa. In June 2011, he was called back to SSD to work as an associate treasurer, overseeing the accounting and in charge of the investments and development of SSD until elected as under treasurer in July 2015. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Commerce degree, major in accounting from Philippine Union College, and a Master in Business Administration degree from Adventist University of the Philippines. As an elder at the Tutuban SDH, at Tubuan, sorry, Tubuan SDA Church in Silang, Cavite, he is passionate on nurturing and encouraging the members to a deeper relationship with Jesus. He also enjoys spiritual music. He is blessed with a lovely and very supportive wife, Mom June Darlene Imperio, who has served the church since 1983, and two sons, both college graduates of Heidelberg College in Cape Town, South Africa. John Dean with a degree in communication, major in media studies, and Johan Duane with a business administration degree and pursued an MBA program at AUP and graduated in March 2015. We are blessed to listen to the servant of God, Sir Jacinth Adap. Maligayang araw ng Sabat sa inyong lahat. Akala ko hindi kayo sasagot. Eh. Happy Sabat everyone. It is a great privilege to be part of this group of scientists. You know, when Dr. Mergal called me and said, we want you to be our speaker during the hour of worship. And I said, what is this? This is the gathering of all the scientists here in the Philippines, Adventist scientists. And he just said, wait, Pastor Mergal, I have plenty of things to do, and you want to add more. <laughs> but I, as I look myself, I said, maybe I'm also a scientist, because I graduated with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Commerce. So maybe I'm also a scientist because when Pacquiao was running for president, people are uh, teasing him to be a scientist because he graduated political science. So he, he was also a scientist. So maybe Dr. Mergal, I'm also a scientist because I'm Bachelor of Science in Commerce. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to bring you greetings from uh, SSD. Do you know the meaning of SSD? Uh, those teachers who are in the far-flung areas. <laughs> S for? 
Southern. S for Asia Pacific. <laughs> and D for division. So Southern Asia Pacific Division. Yeah. But I like the meaning that Pastor Mergal gave to SSD. Seek, save, and disciples. And I think that should be the focus of whatever we do. It is to seek, to save, and to disciples. Amen? Amen. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Jane uh, Sabat. I always greet the couple Happy Sabat every time because they are the Happy Sabat uh, couple in North Philippines. Um, you can forget whatever I'm going to share with you uh, this morning. But one thing I don't like you to forget is this. Ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. Para madali niyong matandaan, pag naisip niyo si Mr. Adap, Adap stands for Ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. <laughs> Kaya kahit saan ako pumunta, wherever I go, I always carry the word, uh, the verse, and the promise that ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. Joman, kahit tayo dumaan sa crucible, ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. Yesterday, the question, why do rivers flows to the sea? Ang sagot ko, ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. Tama? Pagkatapos ng presentation, after the presentation, I, I had, you know, I conclude na ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. So, ngayong umaga, this morning, I'm going to share with you a, an amplification of what Dr. Mergal uh, shared last night. It is man, the value of man, and our relationship to our fellow man. Uh, a while ago, I said in the lesson, it's, it is easier to surrender our will. And Dr. Mergal said, it is difficult after you surrender your will. So, I will not argue with a theologian, with a theologian but I am, since I am an accountant, I like to reconcile. So, because in accounting, you always have to have the balance. What is on the other side must be the same on the other side. So, the balance is, yes, the difficulty is when we surrender, we may face trials and uh, difficulties in life. Um, and that is difficult. But the reconciliation is that by the grace of God, we will endure and we will uh, be enabled by the Holy Spirit through His, uh, the grace, the abundant grace of Christ. In fact, sabi ko nga, the new positions that I have, I can only do it through the grace of God. So, muli, ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. At para hindi nyo rin ako malimutan, pwede rin namang ang dating ay pogi. All right. Um, the title of my presentation this morning is God's Love and the $13.75 Man. When we were kid, uh, when we were kids, I loved to watch from our neighbor's television the series Six Million Dollar Man. Naalala nyo pa yon? I think some of you may have remembered because I think none of you are too young <laughs> not to uh, see that series in the television. You know, Six Million Dollar Man, Steve Austin, uh, astronaut, nahulog, ginamot, ginastosan ng six million dollar. So that why, that why, that's why he was called Six Million Dollar Man. Pero ang pag-aaralan natin ngayong gabi is about a 13.75 dollar person. Alright. According to the text that was read a while ago, it says, Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as the small dust on the scale. Look, he lifts up the aisles as a very little thing. Have you considered a drop in a bucket? Bigay, sa, bigay ako sa inyo na example. Kaninang umaga, I was getting ready and taking the shower. So they, they, the, the timba is almost full. 
or maybe I would say almost almost full. I'm sure ganyan lang kulang. All of a sudden, siguro sa kabilang kwarto may mas malakas na pressure ng tubig. Nagbukas, biglang nawala yung tubig. <laughs> so Ma'am Jane, siguro kayo yun. <laughs> so, I observed the drop. And you won't notice anything on the, you know, how it contributes to the volume of the water in the already in the bucket. It says the nations. So kung yung nation ay as a drop in a bucket, ano ba ang pinakamalaking bansa sa buong mundo? Maybe Russia or United States or Africa. Pero those nations are just a drop in a bucket. Kung yung nation, kung yung bansa ay a drop in a bucket, how much more? Si Mr. Adap. How much more? Si Dr. Mergal. Talagang hindi siya makikita. Meron akong napanood na palabas. I, I watched this movie. The, the title is Inner, uh, Inner Space. It's about a man who was, because of science, was uh, reduced to very, very tiny and he was injected to a man. And he was uh, in like a, a capsule and he was going around the person. It's very, very small. You see, that I was thinking that maybe that would be our condition if we look at the whole universe. Nothing. Halos kung hindi natin nakikita yung covid Siguro ganun din tayo sa buong universe. Kailangan ng isang powerful microscope for us to be noticed. So, the nation is a drop in a bucket, a dust in a scale. Nakakita na kayo ng timbangan. Napansin nyo, uh, notice the, the scale. Yung ginagamit natin sa bathroom. When you, when you don't use it much, uh, it's good that Brian is not here anymore. So maybe Brian, Dr. Brian, was not using the, the scale every time. So maybe the dust there, that when you, when you swipe your hand there, you will see the, the, the yung bakas ng kamay mo. At yung dust na yon, yung mga alikabok na yon, halos hindi natin na no notice, but it builds up. So nations are just dust in a scale. Ano ba? And then, because of that, if, that, if the nations are thus in a scale or compared to an isle being lifted in the hand, how much more is man? Man is nothing. At according sa, sa pagre-research, the chemical composition of man worth only $13.75. Siguro sa peso, sabihin natin 700 pesos. Kasi nag-devalue na yung peso eh. 700 para complete. Para 777. Anyway, it says in Psalms 8.4, What is man that, are mindful, that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Kagaya ng binasa ni, uh, sa prayer ni, ni Dr. Joman, that what is man na pinahalagahan ng ating Panginoon? Ano ba yung composition Let's look at the composition of, of a person or a man. Fat, kung kayo ay medyo mataba, uh, pangit pakinggan yung mataba. If you are healthy, or maybe not healthy. <laughs> chubby, yeah, I like the word chubby. You can, out of your fats, I was looking yesterday from Mr. Google or Mrs. Google, I don't know, maybe Mr. Google, right? Uh, I saw a man, uh, I was walking in, in the mall, and I saw a man wearing a t-shirt. I said, uh, I don't need Google. My wife knows it all. So, <laughs> so this is from Google. I, it may, I, I'm sure these are not accurate, but close to it. So, fat enough to make seven cakes of soap. Imagine. Tapos yung sabon medyo madulas. Uh, siyempre, madaling matunaw. And then, lime. We have lime in our body and it is enough to paint white a 6 by 8 feet wall. Siguro, kasi laki nitong projector natin. 
So yan, yung, yung lime, yung, yung apog sa katawan natin kapag ginawang pintura ay pwede yung pinturahan. And then carbon. Kapag tayo siguro ay ginawang uling. I know some of us are already uling. <laughs> I remember my boss in NPUC before. Uh, they like to brag themselves that because they are, you know, they are charcoal. Kasi maitim yung skin nila. Kapag siguro sila yung ginawang uling, it is enough to make 9,000 uh, lead uh, pencil, yung talab ng bolt ng lapis. And then the sulfur in our uh, body, kung kukunin, it's enough to deflee a small dog. Uh, siguro yung tuta namin medium. So see, yung may mga, yung may mga maliliit na tuta, ano ba, hindi ako mahilig sa, hindi ko alam yung mga uh, breed ng, ng tuta. Uh, merong tinatawag. Ang pinakamalaki siguro ay ano? Uh, German Shepherd? O mer meron, yung, meron yung pamangking ko, Philippine Shepherd. Mukha siyang German Shepherd pero maliit siya. So ang tawag ko siya, Philippine Shepherd. Enough, yung sulfur sa katawan natin is enough to deflee one small dog. Na yung ating posporo sa katawan natin is also enough to uh, produce 2,000 match head. Magkano ba ang pusporo ngayon? <laughs> Hindi na tayo gumagamit ng pusporo kasi meron na tayo mga igniter. Sugar. Uh, Doon sa mga, sa mga chubby na mas maraming sugar sa katawan. It says, one bowl of sugar. Hindi, ko lang, ga, hindi lang in-specify kung gaano kalaki yung bowl. <laughs> merong maliit, merong mas malaki. So, Siguro kung diabetic ka, baka yung mas malaki. And then, the iron. Iron is enough to make a medium-sized nail. Alam yung medium, mga 3 inches na detress na pako. And then, of course, water. Our body has plenty of water unless na dehydrate ka na kasi ma mahilig ka sa asin. Yung lecture kahapon, uh, napatunayan ko na kung ma marami kang asin sa katawan, umuunti yung tubig, ina-absorb yung tubig sa katawan. So, uh, water. Meron tayong 10 gallons of water. Ganun ba kalaki yung 10 gallons? Yung, yung nandun, I think 4 gallons yun, no? yung tubigan. But anyway, the cost of this, 600 or uh, 700 pesos. Or $13.75, para mas masaya, may butal. Alright. But the God of heaven placed value on men. Kagabi ay na-mention ito ni Dr. Mergal. Dr. Mergal mentioned that it, it was God who put the value on us. Imagine, if we are going to take just the chemical composition of, of men, it's only $13.75. Uh, but God put value on us, on men. Man's absolute value may not change. You know, the, our composition may not change. But God did something to increase our value. Amen? Amen? Yan. Nung ako ay bumili ng kotse, ang bili ko ay 120,000. Nung ginagamit na namin, uh, the kids were still small, and so we were living in Pasay, uh, Dr. Jane. Um, and then we go to AUP to visit uh, our parents. One time it was raining. It was raining hard. I said, ah, oh, no problem. We have a car. Alam nyo, pag natuto kayong sa mga teacher, pag natuto kayong mag-drive, ang sunod na gastos nyo, bibili kayo ng kotse. Kaya mag-ingat kayo. <laughs> Natutong mag-drive, bumili ng kotse, and then we were, okay, let's go. Even if it was, even if it, if it was raining, we were driving happily. And then all of a sudden, because of the rain was so hard, we noticed that there... It was also raining inside. I said, ah, what's wrong with this? We didn't realize that the, there is a big um, rotten floor. Uh, butas na siya. Tapos yung tubig sa kalsada pumapasok. So umuulan papunta sa amin yung, yung putik ng ulan. So after that, sabi ko, ipagawa natin tong kotse. So pinagawa namin, body repair. Total body repair. Pinalitan nag-increase yung value para sa akin 
the value of the car increased. Nagkaroon ng bagong pintura, hindi na kulay bakla. Uh, excuse my words. Uh, baka sabihin niyo masama yung salita. Because Pastor Bilioso said, palitan mo nga ang pintura ng kotse mo, parang kotse ng bakla. <laughs> so I borrowed that word. I'm sorry. Um, but, kasi ang kulay niya, ano eh, ano bang tawag doon? Uh, emerald green. Or mint green. So pinalitan ko ng dark green, ng forest green, na pag na, na, na sinaga ng araw, ay nagiging green na green, at pag walang araw, medyo bluish, dark blue, na parang itim na rin. So, oh, naging hunyango yung kutse. <laughs> so, the value to me has increased. Pero sa mga tao, ang alam nila, yan pa rin yung lumang kutse na umuulan sa loob. Yeah. What has God spent for man? Ano ba ang ginawa nila? Number one. God created the world for man to live in. Kung susukatin natin ang sanlibutan, if we are going to see the world, wow, must be expensive. And then, He uh, put fresh air for man to breathe. And after that, He provided the food for us to eat. And then, of course, plenty of water for us to drink and to clean our body. And of course, the Lord provided beautiful scenery for us to admire. And of course, so that the value would be much, much greater to have heaven, God gave Jesus to save men. Hindi lamang itong sanlibutan ang ibinigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Ibinibigay din ng Panginoon sa atin ang kalangitan. Why did we increase the value? Uh, Papaano nag-increase yung value natin? Uh, the increased value of something, it is because of our love of, on that thing. You know, the car that I have, it, it was an old car. The increased value that I give, it's because I love that car. Fixing the car, uh, the house, yung kahit mga abubot inaayos natin, kasi merong sentimental value, pwede nang itapon, pero ayaw, itapon. Kaya pag pumunta ka sa bahay, ang dami-daming kalat. Bakit? Mahal natin yung mga abubot. Baka sa ating mga buhay, meron tayong abubot na nagpapabigat sa ating paglalakbay sa kabuhayang krisyano, baka naman pwede na nating itapon. Huwag na nating ay- ipaayos. <laughs> Itapo na lang. Alright, uh, side track lang yung side track. Okay, God's love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Ito yung nagbigay ng value sa atin, Pastor Gingging. The love of God towards us, naging yung value natin ay hindi mapantayan ng anumang amount. Because of His love for us, God is willing to give up heaven just to love me and you. Sabi ko, Panginoon, sana ganito rin. At ito ang lagi kong panalangin, na ang pag-ibig ko sa asawa ko ay handa kong ibigay lahat-lahat. Walang, walang i-withhold para lamang madama ng asawa ko na yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa kanya, through me, ay maramdaman niya. Sana ganun din kayo sa inyong mga asawa. Heaven's value of one soul. Sabi sa six, uh, volume 6, uh, testimony, Testimonies for the Church, volume 6, page 21, the value of one soul is more value to heaven than a whole world of property. Pwedeng ipagpalit ng Panginoon, ng Diyos, ang sanlibutan sa isang kaluluwa na magbalik sa Kanya. Uh, the value of one soul is more value to heaven than a whole world of property, houses, lands, and money. For the conversion of one soul, we should task our resources to the utmost. Alright. One soul has more value than this. 
the soul, uh, one, one soul has more value than Marina Bay Sands building in Singapore with 2,561 luxury rooms costing $5.5 billion. Um, mas mahalaga kaysa lupa sa Tagaytay. Sino ba sa inyo nakarating na sa Tagaytay? Pwera doon sa mga taga-North Philippines. Sa Tagaytay ay napakagandang lugar. But the price of land uh, is 30,000 per square meter. Sa New York, the cost of land is $4,000 per square foot. Tumingin ka dyan sa baba. Yang, yang, yang tiles na yan, isang tile ay more than, I think this is uh, 16 by 16. So it's more than one foot. And the price of the, that size of land in New York, lower New York, is $4,000. All right, but the value of one soul is more than that. It's more than the 21 million hectares of farmland in North Dakota, costing $13 billion plus. The, the, the soul has more value than the $1.2 trillion in circulation in America. Now it's 1.5, the total circulation of money in, in, in the U.S., the, the U.S. dollars. It has more value than all the golds reserved in Fort Knox, which is 4,582 metric tons of gold, approximately $100 billion. Hindi pa diyan kasama yung Marcos Gold. <laughs> At it is the, the cost, uh, the value of one soul is more than $1.54 quadrillion riches of the world. Sinukat ko yung, uh, yung one. 1.5 quadrillion dollars. Sabi ko, if, if my allowance is, I give you allowance of 1 million dollar, a, 1 million nga ba to? Yeah, 1 million dollar, uh, one, yeah, 1 million dollar uh, a day, you will need to, to have 4 million 219 Years para nyo maubos. Imagine, no? Oh, One million dollar a day ang gastos nyo, pero it will take four million years. Because of love, the value becomes unquantifiable. Ang nagbigay ng value sa atin ay sapagkat minahal tayo ng Panginoon. All the riches of the world are not of sufficient value to redeem one perishing soul. Ano raw? All the riches of the world are not sufficient value to redeem one perishing soul. Why is so precious to God? The value, according to Dr. Merga last night, it is because the blood of Jesus Christ. Imagine, Yung $13.75 na composition ng chemical sa atin ay isinacrifice ng Panginoon yung kanyang dugo which equivalent to the riches of the universe. Ibinigay yun, it was because of His great love for us. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. Amen? Pouring of Christ's blood is not in vain if there is just one soul that, return, that returns to God. Why the church was established? It is because of this love. As an agency for the conversion of soul, the church was established as an agency to proclaim the gospel of salvation. And mind you, that includes the school because the Seventh-day Adventist Church includes the hospital, the school, and the publishing work. It says, to go into all the world to preach the gospel and whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. The church is God's arm to save sinners. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit organized ng Panginoon, gumawa siya ng paraan upang ang ma-establish ang ating church. 
It says in Matthew 28:19 to 20, go and make disciples. Bakit? Because God loves everyone. Gusto niyang Panginoon na sila ay maakay sa paanan ng ating Panginoon. Mark 16:15, go and preach the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9:16 says, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. And Luke 19.10, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And of course, in 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4, God wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of God. So, hindi lang ako, hindi lang kayo. Pati yung ating mga studyante ay nais ng Panginoon na makakilala sa kay Jesus at tumanggap ng kaligtasan. This is the I would say the eleventh commandment. Yung, yung, when Christ bids us to go, ito yung eleventh commandment. Why are we going? Because of the love of Christ that pumup, pum, sumasa atin at ang pag-ibig na ito ay nagraradjate sa ating kapwa. Remember, uh, Pastor Mergal mentioned this last night that the horizontal love and ah, horizontal love comes from the vertical love and then it goes horizontal love. So, because of that, I would say that this is the 11th commandment when we go and find and uh, seek and save those who are lost. This is the greatest commandment because of love. Love is the summary of the two commandments, which is love to God and love to men. And of course, the summary of all things, uh, the, the Ten Commandments, which is love. When there is love, hahayo tayo upang sagipin ang mga nawawaglit. At akayin ang mga tumanggap na upang sila ay lumago sa pananampalataya at si relasyon sa Panginoon. The value of one soul is more value to heaven than a whole world of property, houses, lands, and money. At ito yung catch. For the conversion of one soul, we should tax our resources to the utmost. Ano yung resources? What are these resources that we should use and apply in saving souls? All right. We should be awakened to the real, uh, to the real responsibility of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Preaching Jesus Christ, God's saving plan for you and me and our friends and others. Not church program, yung ginagawa natin ngayon, church program yan. But it's the relationship with Jesus that will save. Not the programs that we do, but it is the soul winning. It should be our response. And these are the resources that we are uh, asked to task ourselves. Prayer. Prayer is a big resource that we can use. Let's pray for someone to be saved. Ipag-pray natin yung ating mga studyante. Ipag-pray natin ang mga magulang ng ating studyante. Money. We need to give to soul winning projects. Yesterday, some of you uh, came to me and said, you know, Elder, we have this project. Uh, do you think the division can help so, ano sa palagay niyo ang sagot ko? Hindi kayo makasagot, no? <laughs> Alam niyo na yung sagot ko. Um, give to soul winning projects. So, that's one of our resources. Money. And then time. Spend time sharing your faith. Kahit sa kaunti. Yesterday, um, Mrs. Mergal, Ma'am Mergal, yung faith is integrated when we teach I remember uh, I was asked to give a, a, a devotional on our, sub, on our um, feasibility study subject. And so one, one requirement is for us to give a devotional. And uh, the topic that was given me, what is patient? Or what is patience to a researcher? So it is an integration of patient, the value uh, the, the spiritual gift of being a patient person into doing research. So this is faith and learning. Let us encourage every, every item that we can glean truths. Let us share, uh, let's, uh, share it and incorporate it in our teaching. 
um, departments. We have so many departments. These departments are formed and it must win for Jesus. Efforts. These, uh, these efforts, these are also our resources. Some efforts to lead one to God. Talents. Alam ko yung marami sa atin dito ang mga talent. We have the talent of singing. We have the talent of leading. We have the talent of uh, smiling. These talents are used to inspire others in saving others. Habi ko ako habang tumatanda, marami ng taling. Sabi, taling? Ah, talent, hindi taling. So, we should use these talents in saving others. And then, of course, I know all of you are scientists. Our knowledge should lead one to Christ. And of course, the best educator are the kind, edu yung, yung mababait na educators. Meron kaming teacher, ma'am, hindi siya talaga humingiti. Ewan ko, meron ba sa inyong teacher na hindi humingiti sa classroom? Ngumiti naman kayo. Ma-inspire yung mga estudyante nyo. So, ang ginawa ko, one time, nag-field trip kami. We went to, uh, what's that uh, bread? Gardenia. So, we went there. So, nung nandun kami, merong tour guide sa amin. The tour guide says, oh, this is our plant, you know. And then our teacher, who doesn't smile, asked the tour guide, do you use, do you use lard uh, in your process of uh, making bread? Ma'am, hindi sila gumagamit ng lard. Ay, anong ginagamit nila? Medium. <laughs> Noon ko lang siya nakitang nag-smile. <laughs> so, Mga teachers, please learn to smile to your student. Kahit, ma kahit makulit yung studyante, uh, daan yung sangiti, ang laki talaga ng nagagawa. I am so inspired by uh, some of our teachers. I think most of them uh, were able to smile in, in, in class. But of course, ang nakakatakot sa lahat na teacher, kapag nakita niyang naughty yung kanilang mga studyante, bigla na lang tutuwid at nahihimatay. Nakakatakot yun sa studyante. I was sitting like this and then my classmates were playing coins and when she came in, she saw that, oh, my students are gambling and all of a sudden she just froze and boom, nahimatay siya. So, napagbintangan tuloy, pati ako nakasama sa principal's office. <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is kindness. Kindness is very important as we reach out to this $13.75 creature. All right. We are called to be God's steward for this purpose. Alam nyo, hindi lamang pera, hindi lamang talent, hindi lamang environment ang ipinagkatiwala sa atin. Hindi lamang kalusugan. Ipinagkatiwala din sa atin ng Panginoon ang katotohanan. And as a good steward, let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God, moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Kayong mga scientists, kayo yung nakaka-discover nitong mga mysteries na to. Imagine, I was really fascinated with the presentation of that, yung hindi, bakit parang drought yung lugar? Kasi, uh, yung, yung lupa ay punong-puno ng asin. But, Yung solution ng Panginoon na yung tubig ay uh, tutunawin yun, hindi pa nagpapatunay na ang Diyos ay umiibig sa atin. Itong mga mysteries na ito, kapag ito ay na-share natin sa ating mga sudyante, the more they will appreciate our greatest, our great creator, Jesus Christ. So, that is found in 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. We are stewards of this truth. We are stewards of these mysteries that we have discovered and we need to share this mystery. And this mystery, when it's discovered, it just points to a loving God. How serious are we with our commitment to be God's instrument? So, this question, have I supported my school in leading students to Christ? Oh, wala akong pakialam dyan. Bahala na sila dyan. Magre-retire na ako. Di ba? Sir, huwag naman kayong ganyan. <laughs> Suportahan nyo naman to. Kami nung naryanasan kasi to, nung member ako ng ministerial, Sir, sama kayo. Ah, ayaw mo na kayo, kayo na kayo na lang. Matanda na ako. Nakaka-discourage yun. Pero, 
kahit maputi na ang inyong buhok, if you can support, let us support uh, leading students to Christ. Have I given value to my student as Christ values them? Or oh, as Christ values me? Have I, uh, do I love my students the way Christ loves me? Na hindi maparisa ng kayaman na nasan libutan? God will be glorified as we bring Jesus to our student in our classroom. And of course, sana bilang treasurer ng division, I hope you are not withholding your financial resources to support the mission. <laughs> All right. Luke 15, 7 and 10, it says, I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just person who need no repentance. And verse 10, Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Sana, mga kapatid, mga kamanggagawa, sa ating pagtupad ng ating mga responsibilidad bilang mga guru, bilang administrators, ay hindi mawala sa atin ang intentionality na maipahayag natin ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon. Ako ay uh, manghang-mangha dahil sa aking halaga, yung chemical composition ko ay hindi nag-atubili ang Panginoon. God did not hesitate to come and offered Himself as a sacrifice so that I would have the chance to be with Him forever. And so this song, in closing, I like us to meditate on this song. Um, I am amazed. So, please.
doesn't deserve. But because of your love and mercy, you have put value in our lives. And that value caused the blood of Christ to be poured out. And so this moment, O oh Lord, again, we want to surrender our lives to you. Use us as your instrument in lifting the name of Jesus Christ. The song that was offered a while ago by the male chorus, it was so inspiring to hear that Christ's name, that loving name, that wonderful name is being lifted up. Oh Lord, this moment, use us mightily in lifting Jesus Christ in our lives wherever we go and as we face the students in our classroom may the love of Christ be seen in us wherever we are that love may shine through us oh Lord we again commit ourselves to you use us and strengthen our relationship with you may we grow may this relationship grow deeper each moment and each day. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance of salvation. And thank you for giving us the value, the value that is more than this world and it, more than the universe because of your love to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath. We are very grateful that the President of South Philippine Union Conference has joined us today. Is Pastor Danielo Palomares, I was informed he's here. There we have it. Brothers and sisters, our President, Pastor Danielo Palomares, and his lovely wife, Mom Jill Palomares. At this point, may I request Dr. Benvenido Morgal and also Pastor Daniello Palomares to join us here on stage. The sermon today, brothers and sisters, is science through the lens of an accountant, a grateful accountant. Thank you. Sir Jacinth, for putting significant emphasis on how God can put so much value on an insignificant human being worth $13.75. Thank you for reminding us that we are worth dying for. We are worth the death of a God who loves us so much. Tunay nga, Ang Dios ay pag-ibig. Amen? And I have another for Adap. Amazing dedication and passion. So as our Muslim brothers and sisters say it here in Mindanao, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah. Southern Asia Pacific Division of the Seventh Day Adventist Church Education Department presents this certificate of appreciation to Jacinto Adap for imparting your valuable insights as the speaker for the hour of worship during the Tri Union Science Educators and Adventist Scientists Conference held on August 4 to 6, 2022 at Mountain View College with the theme, Integration of Creation Science in Teaching and Mission. Your worthy presentation has affirmed and fortified the faith of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on the doctrine of creation as a fundamental anchor of the science of salvation. Given the sixth day of August, 2022, at Mountain View College, Valencia City, Bukidnon, signed by the Associate Education Director 
of Southern Asia Pacific Division, Dr. Brian Edward Sumindap, the Director of the Education Department of our division, Dr. Bienvenido G. Mergal, and the President of Southern Asia Pacific Division, Pastor Roger O. Koderma. Thank you, sir. Dagang salamat balik balik dari sa Mindanao, sir. For our consecration song, we will all be singing, I Will Go. Please stand. Oh, I hear the voice of trees. Father, their hearts are filled with joy, knowing your great love and your death is the greatest expression of how precious and special we are to you. You have given your all to us. Help us to give our all to you without reservation. Here are your people, their God. I do not know their struggles. I do not know their challenges, but we are very much sure that you will not leave us nor forsake us as you promised in the Bible. And we claim that so that, that will become a reality as we continue our journey with you. Dear God, Thank you for the inspirations that we have heard today. And as we prepare ourselves for the coming or brand new school year, help us to reflect the character of Jesus to our students, to our parents, to our co-workers. And by doing this, these people will be brought closer to you. 
our greatest desire, Lord, that when you will come in the clouds of heaven, all of us, together with our loved ones, will be with you in a heavenly home which you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.